I just feel we're in it in our day. I was in early off or something. Like, I think I had just finished work and I just bounced in. And uh, two, like three cunts just went by in mad quad bikes, but mad big loud fuckers, like <laughs> just in the middle of the town. I was like, is that like, can you do that? No, I mean. <laughs> No, I mean, must be illegal, go now. Must add. It's a weird one, isn't it? It's a weird place yeah. to go with a quad bike, isn't it? I know. Why? Right, it was on Queen Street. That I seen them as well. Aye. Queen Street. Jeez. <laughs> Very busy street. I know. I know. For a quad. For a quad. For for anybody really. <laughs> for a queen. <laughs> <laughs> for a queen. On the pavement, I know. Is that how I'm like? Shocking. Is that how like Queen Street and all that? Like, how does that? Did the Queen open that street or something? <laughs> With a ribbon? Oh, but, uh, no, but I've seen it. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the streets are named after, like, slavery and uh, that. Uh, right? Jamaica Have you seen street. that? Aye, uh, uh, big statues and all that as well. Uh, tobacco, uh, tobacco, tobacco Virginia thing. Street. <laughs> <laughs> tobacco <laughs> Street. <laughs> Tobacco Street, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tobacco Street, uh, that's probably one of the best streets in Glasgow. See, see, cause you just said there, like the Queen went to a chippy there once, and that's why it's called that. See, near where you're from, in Presswick Airport, uh, Elvis went there, and it was know. just like a stop off flight, mate, know, mate. And it's just Elvis is just everywhere. Yeah, mate. <laughs> what? Mate. There's just quotes and that, like, <laughs> ain't nothing but a hound dog with a question mark. Honestly, mate, the, well, if anything happened in fucking Ayrshire at all like that, <laughs> they just cling on to it, man. I, <laughs> Donald Trump stopped off with the air, like that fucking, what's that big plane, the Air Trump, Force One? Trump, Force is that what it's called? It, they, it stopped at Presswick Airport. <laughs> that's, a, that's a trainer, you and me. What's it called? No, the big like American plane. Aye. Aye, get the, it up, yeah. Aye. Aye, that's the big American plane. They named the trainer after the, the shoe. Believe no, we no. They named the shoe after, after the no. We the trainer after the shoe. <laughs> they named they named the shoe after the plane. <laughs> the wow, the that, was a, that was more difficult than I thought. Yeah, full of knowledge, you. Yeah. <laughs> facts on facts. Unbelievable. But are we ready to start? We good? Aye. We on? We're on? We're on already? Cool. Been spinning gold here. Sorry to catch you off guard there, but we're <laughs> on already, man. But what a guest we've got on this week, guys. Big star. Big star. You and McVicker. Cheers, lads. Here Woo. we go. <laughs> Cannot imagine that. We just came from the film. Thanks for coming in, you <laughs> man. <laughs> mate, what what a guest. I've been looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. We've been made in a bank full of things. Yeah. Um, pff, mate, how are you? Knack it, mate. I fucking knack it. I just. It's that DJ life. I think, aye, mate. mate. I think um, last year, because I kind of broke through in the pandemic, I'd never really known how heavy like touring was. Uh, aye, like aye. I'd, I've been DJing since I was 19. I'm 28 now, so nearly 10 years, and I never missed, hardly missed a weekend. But that was in the same place in here or mm. Glasgow or whatever. Aye. Whereas now I'm like, with the weekend I was in Nottingham, playing till four in the morning, and then I needed to wake up at. Uh, well, to be fair, we had no sleep because we went to the casino, but uh, we woke up at like fucking 11, so we'd had like four hours sleep. Then I had to get a six and a half hour train to. Aberdeen. It's so like we see doing that, mate, and you're not sleeping. Then, then I was playing in Aberdeen at Cultivate Festival from nine to eleven, closing it, and then I was playing at the afters for one to three. Fuck and that. then see when you get to the Sunday, mate, you're like, ah, how am I still awake? <laughs> mate, I, I, but I, I, it's just the adrenaline, I, mate. And when it wears off, you're burst, man. I, During I, the week, I'm a corpse, man. <laughs> mate, that's what I was going to ask. Cause I always wonder this, cause like even like Miz, like fucking, yeah, I'll yeah. see him. Like I'll just be sitting in bed, just like lying down or something and it's like off to fucking Aberdeen and I'm Aye. like is there no some nights you're like oh, I can't be fucked man Aye. is there ever a time you, you can't be fucked never never I love it so much mate I can't even I can't even describe it I, I waited I think some some folk though like if you you can make a tune in your bedroom and then you you can become a fucking sensation yeah. do you know what I mean whereas I worked eight year mm-hmm. to get to that point I was making tunes since I was 21 DJing since I was 19 so this was just the dream had eventually got there Aye. do you know what I mean so now I appreciate it because I've done Aye. the shit like I've been the there I've DJed there. to Nakan I've mm-hmm. DJed there's two folk in the dance floor it shuts early I mean you're playing it. shite tunes like I've done it all so now I'm just like there was one time mate 
and this is how I knew I was like doing it for the right reasons. I was playing at uh, Street Rave in SWG3 and I had a stream in London the next day and it was the first time I'd been in a flight for about two years because of the pandemic. And uh, do you know when you come over the clouds and it's pure sunny in a plane? Aye, mate, aye. I was looking out and I was like nearly started greeting. And I was like, mate, I was like, ah, mate, you're fucking doing it. Go aye. on. And that's that's just how I feel about every like when I'm on that fucking six hour train and three hours sleep or I've had no sleep. Sometimes I'm just like that. This is the fucking best job in the world. Aye, you know what I mean? man, that is that's a great way to look aye, at it. Mate, that aye. is a great. And it's see, I as you're saying, it's cause you've had you've started it's not like I, as you're saying because I bet a lot of people because of the tune tell me something good they're like oh fucking they think you're pure new to it like mate. oh it's brilliant that song's doing yeah, off son no where did you start I, like oh like they think that you that brought one tune out and it just went <laughs> massive aye, aye, aye. Mate. that's like and, and money as well folk are like oh you must be loaded now son and I'm like mate I fucking went eight year with nay money aye, to aye. get to this <laughs> point do you know what I mean I like people pay back exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> so it's been aye. fucking mate it's mad some fucking journey we've been on but I like tell me some good just gave me a platform to do what I want to do and now now I'm in control of everything I'm doing and I, there's so many avenues I can go down now just because of that tune so I'm grateful for it but it's it's just going to be a stepping stone for me uh, you know what I mean no, so just doing, opening up doors that's like, it mate uh, that's it 100% because I'm playing because of that tune like Australia and America this year class. and Europe and I'd be fun on that so it's fucking mate, it's unbelievable Aye. that's what they call in the business the golden ticket baby yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they call it but look that is what, what a tune it is I mean I'm, I'm sure you're maybe when you hear it do you do you still go yes or do you go oh right, I don't I, I don't go yes no I, yes Imagine like, every time I you went, to me. yes, <laughs> come on. Nah, mate, I did used to, but I did used to, mate. I'd, I'd get an offer <laughs> semi when I was playing it, and then the fucking crowd reaction. So it still is amazing, but I think I've heard it that many times. And then, because see, the thing is, like, because it went in the charts and that, I've not listened to chart music since I was 16. Mm -hmm. And, it, like, it was weird for me to see it in that realm. Okay. Aye, mate, because... Because I never, I never made music to be in the charts, and even tell some good. It was just meant to be for my sets aye. when I go out and when I got out of the pandemic. I just got to play it, and hopefully it'd pick the party up. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> it's fucking near enough in the top ten, and aye, I was aye. like, "What the fuck is going on?" Do you do you think right? This is I've got a wee theory about this, right? Do you think so? That tune sort of came out like pandemic, like mm -hmm. pure. Do you think it's because it's called like? Because everything was so negative in the world, and it's like, tell me something you're good. Right, it's like a right, mad right, uplifting right, message, mate. and that's yeah, how yeah. It maybe even went even harder. Some, sometimes there are tunes that happen in moments, and they're on like it was unintentional. It wasn't it meant to be like that, but it just like I think when uh, I started realizing that when it was going to come out, because it was so it was Annie Max last ever hottest record in the world on Radio One, and that happened to be on the very first day that lockdown was lifted uh, nay rules oh. in England so I was playing in Liverpool that night and then Annie Matt made it hottest record in the world and then I think it just that you're right it was just a moment do you know what I mean I mean it's like the perfect storm and Aye. then you're in the, I'm in the middle of it and I'm like what the fuck it's, is going on it's perfect storm what a no. storm this is man <laughs> <laughs> it's easy, one of the best storms ever, man. <laughs> mate, that is, look, it's a great tune, right? Cheers, mate. But I want to talk about something even greater. Mm -hmm. A rolling beans. No. Oh, mate, come on. Tell me, <laughs> one day I'm Plus, sitting, man. I'm scrolling through Twitter, just your average day, and then I just see something about, like, what's wrong, babe? You've hardly touched your rolling beans, right? <laughs> and I burst out laughing as soon as I read it, because I used to think about things like this. I used to think about maybe if somebody maybe had a bowl of milk, like for cereal, right? And you pulled watsits in it and tried to eat it. I thought that would be minging. And same kind of vibes with is, the rolling beans. Is. Even just how that would work, eating a rolling beans. I'm picking up what you're putting down, mate. I, I, and it's it, a rolling beans. It is. <laughs> and what I want to ask is, how... You bump, <laughs> mate. I want to know, what's the perfect amount of beans to put on the rolling beans have you gone a full tin no <laughs> no, no it depends depends mate it depends what mood you're in do you know what I mean so, <laughs> so what, this came that. about this came about because uh, I was playing in Perth right and me and my mate had drove back to Glasgow we were rough as fuck right and we were crying with laughter and he was like ah, imagine you, you came home and your mod just made your own beans what did you say <laughs> so I put that tweet up and I said uh, 
really worried about my wee brother. I've just came in and he's walked past, straight past his own. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then my, so we started winding my mum up about it and we're like, ah, right, mum, what's the script here with the dinner? She keep making us a rolling bean. She's like, I'm never fucking making a fucking rolling bean. What the fuck are you talking about? Going mental, You're right? No, no getting it. No, that. no. And she was like, ah, talking about fucking rolls. I would never make you that. And that. So it just fucking, we just started pissing ourselves. And then, um, I'd say the perfect amount, mate. I don't know. Imagine you're taking a picture, right? And it's one of those, can how you get restaurant pictures and it looks, the, the burger or something Aye. looks awfully good. Uh. If you're taking one of those pictures, you'd want the beans kind of coming out the side and that, Aye. wouldn't you? Glistening. Aye, the butter in that. Aye, oh, an advert shot. Aye, oh, mate. That's oh, what I mean. Aye, it's it's actually, the, the beans are actually glued to the <laughs> roll. <laughs> <and> <laughs> we have you to... seen the mad videos? And it's like Aye. how like Domino's the make their pizzas look so good. And it's like they put uh, like glue in the cheese and that. Aye, and aye, aye like it's all like fake paint. Nailed in the pizza mm. and left up one bit. Aye, mate. They paint like the reflection on and that. It's that's ridiculous, isn't it? What is real anymore, you know? Mate, I swear to God, what I was going to do before you came on was... Go to the shops, buy rolls, buy beans, have a roll on beans, oh, record man. myself doing it, and <laughs> oh, no give a review. No way. I was gonna, but I life like life gets that. in the way. Mate, I'm gonna. I might still do it. Cause I'm just like that. Mate. <laughs> I've had my like breakfast rolls that have got beans on them, but they're a, it's accompanied by other things. You need a bit of aye, like bacon, aye, aye, a bit slice of, or something. Aye. Aye. The beauty of the roll beans is there's nothing else on it. Exactly. It's the bean Imagine and I that's it. Up to a bark and I'm like, there's nothing else. On, uh, there's something else on it. Like raw onions. <laughs> nah, <laughs> oh, oh, accompanied, accompanied by a pretzel <laughs> or something. Yeah. Like that. What is what is the worst kind of rolls? I mean, my dad. I'm sure my dad's. Put like boiled egg on our own. That You're is obsessed with your diet boiled eggs. I just don't understand a boiled egg. I'll come doing my dad's boiling a couple of eggs in, in a pot, and I'll just be like, ah, how can you even enjoy this? I'm a dry, <laughs> a sad, like, I'm a dry egg man. I'll take a fried egg. I'll take them scrambled. Hell, I'll even take them poached. But I'm not having a boiled egg, mate. Do you like boiled eggs? Uh, egg in a cup. Is that a boiled egg? What no, I egg in no. a cup's good though. What egg I'll in a say cup's is, unreal. if you get the 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 yolk runny. You can dip the, you know what I mean? If we're, cook, if we're playing that game. That. Aye, I'll, I'll take That's that. Aye, but if you're aye, drying aye, up the yolk. I that, aye. Aye, now it is a party, I mate. Like now we're cooking. Eggs, but no, you know, no, a fan, mate. Rubbery, no. can I? Aye. Aye, I like scrambled eggs. Uh, what the fuck was I going to say there? Aye, egg in a cup, you know what that is? You had that? Uh, I'm sure that's egg a boiled egg, by the way. It's a boiled egg with aye. egg. And you, cut, you, you mash it up in a cup and it's got the butter and salt and pepper. Aye, aye, aye. aye I've seen this contraption. Aye, aye, toasting that. Contraption about a witchcraft. Unbelievable. That's, that's, good. that's a proper scheme. That's top tier. Scheme breakfast. Aye, aye, aye. Scheme breakfast. I think you know. <laughs> you just cock somebody knows an egg in a cup. You're like, you know, big man. <laughs> I must be too posh. You know, I've heard that. I have heard that. I have heard that. You've heard that. the peasants eating it. I have heard it, mate. I have heard it. I've heard some strong rumours about them anyway. But aye, so anyway, rolls and beans, fantastic. But let's take it back. I mean, we're, we're here now, we're on the podcast, the lights are shining, baby, but I know it wasn't always like this, mate. Take me back to you as a youngster, mate. We, do we always we, we always write into dance music since we were young? Mm, no, it was mere hip-hop and rap I was into. Right. Um, my big brother was into all sorts of shit. He was into, like, Linkin Park, and then he was into Tupac and Nas and Wu-Tang Clan, and then I got into, like, 50 Cent and that, and that was, like, my first exposure to music. Dance music was more my mod in the spring cleaning with the ghetto blaster on, and it was like insomnia, faithless, and all that. Yeah, you know, it's it's all, all unreal, mate. And then all the trans anthems playing in that. But my mum used to work in the Hangar 13 in Air, and she that was like where Street Dave started, which was like my muse for everything. It was a club night in Air, like back in the 90s. And um, I, gr grown up, mate, I, I did always have a interest in music. I would always fucking be listening to music. I'd, Back in the day, I had my MP3 player strapped to my wrist oh. as well, or like the member the disc players. You as invented well. an Apple Watch, mate, basically. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And the mad disc players that you like attached to your belt. Exactly. Oh, really? Exactly. Big fuck all things, and you would get every album and just put it in. My but you'd have to listen to the album. That was. I think there's, a, there's something missing now with music where. Folks' attention spans with 15 second TikTok videos or Instagram right. stories. You're like, ah, like just fucking. Whereas, like. 
I don't remember the last time I listened to a full album on a CD and just let it play. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Because everybody's like, oh, this tune, this tune shites. See you aye, later. Aye. And like, shuffling tunes and all. Mate, like albums are meant to be like, you listen to that. It's, like one to 13, you know what I mean? There, so I, that, I, that was when I used to, I used to have like a New York Yan- Yankees fucking baseball tap, G oh. unit sneakers with the spurs <laughs> on them and that. Oh, yeah, I was heavy <laughs> into them, man. Big big box. Stuff. And then, I and then, um, school uh, I and I, I hip hop for at least until I was about 18 and then I started DJing when I was 18 uh, 19 and then I got my first gig I was playing hip hop so all I would do is just play hip hop at like all sorts and then I think it's like a natural progression see when you're DJing because like, house music or any like electronic music is normally four before so it's just a kick drum so it's easier to mix whereas hip hop is like 16 bars right. right so you have 16 bars and you need to cut it because there's a chorus coming in or there's a different because it's all different parts in a, a hip hop song or whatever whereas house music you've got an intro and that can be fucking a minute long uh, so for DJing it's better to blend but hip hop I miss mixing hip hop because it was just cut cutting cutting like quick fire uh-huh. and it was dead exciting you could get dead creative with it but now it's like it's more about the art of you've got I've got fucking hundreds or thousands of folk in front of me how do I take them on this journey playing a certain type of music uh-huh. that's going to resonate with them but I'm also I'll, if anybody's heard me DJ they'll know that I don't play the one genre and I'm diff- different v- BPMs and speeds and I try and just mix it up when I'm doing it because mm. see because I've came for hip hop I get bored Aye. And I'm like, ah, this is good, but Aye, I like just I fucking just, just change it up a bit, and I get pure fucking it like antsy on the decks and that. So Aye. I think I that's when I got into music, like electronic music, and then I went to like fucking we went through the EDM phase, and we went to like Colors Fest and that, and then I don't know what it was. It was just like I started like losing interest in it a bit, and then there was a point where I think my mum put on like Basement Jack's Red Alert. And that was like, oh my god! And then I started remembering I liked these tunes, and then my mate is—he's called Aaron. He was like d- dead fucking weird guy, right? He's he's de- he's de- he's dead now, right? So I don't want to fucking say it, but like, he was fucking mental, right? He had this big fucking afro, and he always wore these like mental shirts before MD had, had shirts and that. And I'm not kind of everybody wears them now. He was way ahead of the trend, cords and that, and I'd be like. Mate, why are you wearing that? Like, like, where, you, where are you going dressed like that? And I was just a wee fucking idiot. Like, I was going to colour space. You're starting a wee G unit. Exactly, exactly. Look at the state of you, man. And then like, a G star tap on or something oh, like that. Do you know what I mean? And then... <clears throat> exactly, exactly. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's a weirdo, but it was fucking oh, definitely yeah. me. So he, he introduced me to like the underground like club culture and, and he went to the Berkeley suite to see a lesbian DJ couple called Tama Sumo for Berlin. Uh, but I was used to go and seeing DJs that everybody liked, so I'd like, oh well, I'm gonna go see them because everybody's got to see them. They must aye, be good. Aye. And then that night we went to Berkeley Street. They only played disco. It was dead cool, and my mind just fucking blown. And then I started was on Resident Advisor looking for DJs I'd never heard before. Like, oh, let's go see them. Like, I wonder what they'll be like. And it became more of like going to hear tunes I've never heard before rather than oh, let's go and see you and McVicker to hear Tell Me Something Good. Do you know aye, what I mean? Aye. It became more like, I want to learn. Like, aye, I want to, I want to learn about like this now. That's like the total opposite mindset for like somebody like me who would go and you're just looking for a name, you know, really. That's it, Because yeah. you're like, aye, it's reliable. Like, it's aye. Like, aye. It's I, like, I, I was like that, aye. though, mate. I was like that. It's just, I think that that night, it would just change my full mindset of aye. it. And then, then uh, these things you meet, like, for, like I thought, I, th- I used to think it was like the snobby side of it, and I'd be like, I don't want it because they're they're just they're too cool for school. They're not, they're going to look down on somebody like me, like. And, and then it, it wasn't like that. Just you became like part of this fucking weird cult that folk what well, to listen to high quality dance music, and and then you just get involved in it. And then since then, mate, fucking hell, that was about eight year ago. I'm, I'm still here, obsessed, obsessed mate, obsessed. Eh? It's the best way to be, man. So like you, so you started DJ when you were eighteen. Mm-hmm. So like what what were you doing? Let's like, even you left school and that. Like what were you doing for like 
So obviously, I, d- I doubt you're like, I'm going to be a DJ and I'm not nah. going to get a job or that. Like, what were you doing like, when you left school? What was your plan? 17. So I'd wanted to be a primary teacher since oh, I was really? 16. Yeah. And Mr. I went Mr. through... Mr. McVicker? Aye, mate. That sounds alright, That sounds quite scary. That sounds scary. Well, there's Mr. McVicker. He heal his shoes, corrupt the whole Aye, aye, aye. Mr. McVicker. Mate, I used to get called Mr. Ronaldo because I would go play football with him in the playground and that at lunchtime. Mr. Ronaldo. I was placement in Cumnock, Greenmill and Cumnock and uh, I used to go play football with them after, every lunchtime but then because I became pally with them when I got them in the class they used to never listen to me because they thought I was their <laughs> pal and I'm like Mr Ronaldo what, what are we doing today what are we doing today and I'm like eh shit dude no, I didn't work do you know what I mean it's but hard to keep by the way well I, worked hard, in, I worked in a school I was like a youth worker right when I was at oh, uni and see keeping that obviously youth workers need to be a bit more like um, down with the kids aye aye I think hip hop. Yeah, it's, it's just more relatable. Aye. I felt like I got. It's hard to keep the boundaries, but when you do that, aye, because I, I, I felt like I got more out of them learning wise anyway because I could relate to them more and I wasn't just treating them like a wee dafty do you aye. know what I mean? Because like that was one of the reasons I actually quit teaching because I got I did five year at uni. I, I had to do a repeat year because I was fucking, I was partying all the time, <laughs> so I fucked it. And then I finished my degree, got a degree, and then I just, I just phoned my mum. I was like, I'm not doing this. I don't want to do it anymore. And that's, that's when I was 22. And then I just fully went for music. But ah, yeah, it's so hard, mate, because they, they just think that you're their pal. Aye. But like one of the main reasons I used to go into every placement I'd, I was there I think I'd done about eight placements right and every placement I went into they'd be, I'd go into the staff room and the teacher would be like oh have you got him in your class oh, have you got her in your class they're no good that, are man. they and that, mate, that used to make me seething because yeah. my mum we grew up in a scheme in here called Zulu and my mum would walk us from Zulu to Alloway which was like an affluent area mm-hmm. because well she wanted what was best for her kids and Alloway was a better school I think so, but I used to feel like an outcast, like no one outcast. I was always popular and I was clever at school and that. But I, there was just something there, and I used to feel it after that teachers. And that's that was my motivation to want to be a teacher because I was like, oh, I want to treat these kids mm-hmm. fairly, like what they deserve. They're only fucking children, aye, do you know what I mean? And all aye. they know is after home life. Aye, yep. exactly. See, see, now you mentioned like the staff room, right? I was thinking about this all day. You know how like. When you're a wee guy at school and the staff room's like a mad magical place, man. It's like <laughs> pure <laughs> mystical, like Aye. pure like nobody's allowed in it and that obviously. Aye. And like my teachers used to say, like, I always I always stick up for you when your name comes up in the staff room. <laughs> you're a good boy in that, right? That's all the shit. I I used to imagine <laughs> That a teacher would stand at the front and be like, Jamie, and they'd all be like, Boo! Right, guys, Jamie Kelly, honest opinion, go. Yeah. <laughs> Send them down, you know what I mean? Get them out! <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's me, like, uh, Jamie Kelly. <sighs> Oh, oh, it's an idea. Ah, yeah, it's mate. It was in my so would I, mate. I'm <laughs> like the only guy in the staff room, usually, <laughs> and it's like weddings and pregnancies <laughs> and fucking. But then, aye, that was that was like my, that was like one of my when when I got out into the schools, man, and they were talking about fucking six, seven year olds, and it's like, right. wh- why do you hate them <laughs> so aye, much? Like, like, that's that's so, actually just hate a wee them. guy. That's you know? actually so funny when you think about it. It's fucking mental, mate, and then. Every single place, and I'd say about six out of the seven, they would they would put, pam them after me because I was a guy, mm-hmm. and it was usually we guys that were like acting up or whatever. And every single time at the end of my placement, they would be like, "Oh, he worked really well for you," and it was only because I gave him the time of day Aye. and just forgot about everything. Just let's try and make him learn, mm-hmm. and hit what makes him tick. And, 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 and well, uh, well, that's what I thought. And it, but then their argument is. The state of kids in a class, you need to make the majority of them learn. So there's going to be. Can I focus on the minority? Uh, that's yeah. it. Aye. 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 Which I, it's, it's the way the education it systems, is. it's like results it's driven instead of like. Because it's so I think, dated as well, man. I think what happens is as well, like, tell you're saying, like, you get a better response at them when you treat them like I think Fairly, when yeah. you humanise them they humanise you that's so it. like see if like you're a teacher who treats them like like you shut up when I'm talking or they'll look at you as if you're not even a real person exactly. and that's why like I think back now to school like teachers used to get pure abused mate like actual like throwing stuff at right. but it was always the ones that won they like that like that's it. but I think it's maybe just trying to act out back to them not I mean just getting that mad frustration uh, out it's, it's just a balance in it uh, teaching like I, I used to go in and be a prick like 
I, but, and I've got an awful loud voice, right? So it's uh, the I'm, I know. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'll never forget it. Right? I was doing PE and we were doing basketball and they were all bouncing the ball and I'd asked them to stop, right? <laughs> and uh, I went like, ah, right! <laughs> and mate, they all just dropped their balls and I turned around and everybody was like, oh, their balls were just bouncing. <laughs> so they were all like, ah. Because I'd never shouted before. As I did that <laughs> yeah. properly, and I just fucking went mental. But I, after that one, I learned like, you can't be their pals all the time like, if you wa actually want them to learn. So I used to go in pure strict, Mr. McPricker, and then I'd be Mr. McVicker towards the end, <laughs> ah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and yeah. have a laugh in that. Yeah, like, so. chill with them out. That's it, mate. Uh, what was your, do you, they used to all slap you about that in Vietnam, didn't they? Uh, in Vietnam, I man, in Vietnam, they used to... Is, no, that, they, where you, is that where you did it? I, no, I taught that. So i done it at, here in a high school. i done it in Knightswood Secondary. Right. And then... But before I'd done that, I was in Vietnam for like a year teaching English. Holy fuck. So I teach in nice. like three to five year olds English. Why? What made you want to do that? Don't know. Just um, just, do you know what it was? i seen a video, a guy, he's called like Colin a broadcast or something, right? And he's a guy and i seen these YouTube videos and he would go into markets in China, see like where they sell like fakes, but they look like actual bang on, nah, like yeah, nailed yeah. on, right? So like he would go in and he would ask them a price, but then... In, when they told him the price, he would start talking Chinese to them and they would be like, oh, fuck. And like, How this, how's this guy no shit? This mad white guy, he's speaking Chinese. So then he would like haggle with them. And then, but I thought he was like on holiday, but then he was there for months. And I was like, how's this guy just living in China? Like, what does he do? And then I found out he taught English. And then oh, right. I just, I just, I was like, Erin, let's go to Vietnam. That's cool, mate. But she done it, she came with me, so. Brilliant. I, we talked talk together, but it is, it's a, it's, an, it's obviously a completely different thing teaching her there, man. Like, yeah. but I, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good, good profession, noble profession. <laughs> noble. But then you're like that, fuck this. Um, I don't want to be noble anymore. I want to set, set the dance right. floor on fire. <laughs> um, so, so obviously you're at that stage, you're like, I don't want to do this. I want to be a DJ and that. So what, like, how does your first, like your first gig come about? So I'd been DJing all through uni, just mm -hmm. at the like local club, but I started wanting to take it seriously after I'd put all my eggs in one basket, really, mm -hmm. with teaching, and then my passion became music over teaching. And uh, I phoned my mum. My mum had been play paying for me to be in this flat in here. So I was at uni, and she's like, I, was like, I don't want to be a teacher, I want to be a DJ. <laughs> she you want to be a fucking wet? <laughs> Do you know how fucking hard that is? And I was like, oh, fuck, what have I done? What have I done? But I was like, so, st I still, I'm just the same as I was back then, just focused and... I got my degree and everyone, even folk knew me that's, that don't fully understand what I'm doing will still say, aye, but you've always got your degree to fall back on. And I'm like, yeah, but, yeah, aye, aye, mate. And I'm like, so funny, I'm like I, I, I don't get pissed off. It's just like, Negative. if I was going to fucking do it, exactly. <laughs> aye, so I, I, I got my degree and, and once I packed it and I was like, right, aunt, if I'm going to do this, I need to do something special. So I started my own club night in here and um, I named it after... It's called ten, it was called Ten, and I named it after. So my dad died before I was born on the tenth of the first of October, nineteen ninety three, and then my papa, who was kind of like my dad growing up, he died on the tenth of December. So this fucking number ten was like a recurring theme, right? And I was like, I want to change it into a positive because there's so many club nights in Glasgow, but there was none in here. Right. And I'd worked for Subby as well, so I'd I'd worked for the I Am and Tuesday nights in Subby, and I'd learnt like loads of stuff off them, like how to create a family, who to have involved. So I took that knowledge into here, and then we started ten. And because see, because it meant so much to me, it like that just like went on to the crowd and whoever came, it, it became so much more meaningful. So when I started that, I was like, fuck, I'm so glad I've done this. Like, it was like the motivation. And then when I was playing at 10, that was like the first time I'd been able to play music I wanted to play. And the receptions were mental. Like what the, the fucking club gave us an Easter Monday, right? Graveyard shift, who the fuck wants uh, to put a night on an Easter Monday? <laughs> And I did, because it was the only one that gave us. So, and then 80 folk turned up, which for air is unreal. And then it just, we um, we did a fucking illegal rave in the woods in the next event. So we, <laughs> this story's fucking mental. Right? We, we went to a sound, it was a music studio. It's like kind of like this, it's like Aye. a room like this, but a wee bit, but I think it was like, 90 cap or something like that, and we sold it. And I never booked any DJs of that. It was just at residence fair, trying to like big up local talent and that. Mm. 
And uh, so I was putting this thing on and the studio only had a licence to 1am and I was like, there's no chance for what to go home at 1am. So uh, I went to Arnold Clark during the day and during that whole week building up, we'd found a spot in like four miles out in Coyote Woods and we'd made a clearing and we put up fairy lights, got like tarpaulin for a roof and uh, a DJ, we made this pure like wee hippie illegal rave, right? Aye. We were, and we were driving by somebody's house and they were having a clear out and there was a big metal bin with like that fire pit here we go <laughs> got that got a jenny we made a fucking walkway and then we made like a a, a wall through of bushes to cover it up so nobody could see it yeah. <laughs> so I went to Arnold Clark that day and I was like right, I need a van because I didn't know how I was going to get folk up there because I didn't want hundreds of taxis pulling up to this woods aye, right? so, so <laughs> mate it's <laughs> fucking <laughs> aye, aye. just, just <laughs> yeah, a taxi to the woods mate. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want that happening and then uh, taxis and taxi folk in here they would have just talked and it would have been shut down so I went to Arnold Clark and I was like right, I need a van they were like 90 quid I was like right sound gave them the 90 quid and parked the van outside we did the event it was fucking sold out unreal and then I went into the crowd and I was like right we've got a, a afters and I would somewhere thinking nobody's going to want to come with me to an after if I say this, right? Aye. So I was like, there's a van outside, go <laughs> wait outside man. it. Mate, aye. <laughs> so mate, mate, I walk outside, there's about 30 folk you'd behind this van. Aye, I'm like, ah, fuck, how am I going to, that's like, like fucking folk try to smuggle folk <laughs> into the country or something. Yeah. So all these folk pile into the back of the van and um, I start driving, I'm sweating like fuck, like so stressed out as well, mate. Like that, that's what I, I don't miss that side. Like now I get loads of shit done for me, but being a promoter and an event organiser and being in control of a team as well, ah, fuck me, it was like, and that was again having all my eggs in one basket after mm-hmm. quitting teaching. Ah. So we drove up and Snapchat locations had just become a thing. And uh, one of my mates, who was a PR for the event, Murray, is fucking punching the ceiling singing Rangers songs, right? Nah, I'm, I'm, I, I can't oh. believe this doing this. Slamming the brakes, and all I hear is all 30 folk <laughs> after the hang, right? Oh my God. I slammed on it, and I opened the side door, and I was like, you, you can't fucking sit down. Do you know what, I'm, do you know what I've got in the line here? <laughs> he turns right, and he's like, ah, sits down. He's like, sorry, mate, sorry, sorry. So he drives up, open the door. And I'm like, every every cunt turn your Snapchat location off because we can't have MD coming here. <laughs> so we'd got, I'd went to the charity shop, uh, got fucking jumpers and jackets for every day in case MD was called. We bought free booze for every day, water for every day. We were so out of pocket. It was never for the money. It was mere about creating something yeah, legendary, man. Right. I and then uh, we, we, we went at that in depth for like right. Birds are only going to want to want to come here and piss in front of every day. So that's why I don't make a budge toilet. So we, get, we had black cloth and we cut down trees and we put four posts in the soil. <laughs> put the black cloth around, made a wee doorway and just dug a pit for these oh birds, right? God. So these birds had an actual toilet to go in because we couldn't afford a portal mate, or whatever, like, do you know the what the I mean? thinking man. that it went in and Honestly, You actually, like, I can tell you really thought honestly, about it, honestly. But it was, it was... I'd been fueling the fire for clubbing in here to be about the money mm-hmm. and that's all commercial clubs were in it for and I was part of that but we wanted to be about the consumer but what, what will they want let's go over and above for everybody for no reason for right. no reason that's just because we love music enjoy, that's it mate just because we love music and we want them to enjoy it and get into it and I think things like that that's set us apart after we did that illegal rave we done that we went on till five in the morning and folks still say it's the best night of their life I've got the logo tattooed my um, <laughs> folk, folk are coming up to the events going I've got it tattooed on me and I was like like we created a fucking cult here it was Aye. mental and then after that event we sold out every single one and never booked one DJ so <laughs> fuck it mate it's see to this day I was talking to Patrick Topping about it and I was telling him I don't think I'm ever going to get crowds like that. How special the moment. Aye. It was only 94, but they yeah. were mental aye, and it was... Aided aye. hadn't aye. seen something like that for 30 years aye. and I still, like... I still my favourite time in that's my life, how, man. That's how cunts talk about mad old Hacienda nights. That's what I mean, like, mate. Pure, the mad 90s. And like we had, like, our own sound system and that. It was all just homegrown, like, aye. old school, but fucking in 2017, do you know what I mean? It's mental, mate. Aye, and now, because 
you've like made a name for yourself. The crowds are always like half the like half the people like will just be like, You make Vicar, like they just the name, no actually they've even maybe heard the full set of yours. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're just like, right. You make Vicar will go to that. So oh. that passion, that pure um like like ground yeah, level yeah, sort of uh, like I is that a community yeah, thing? Definitely because nobody's like, made it yet. You know what I mean? Exactly exactly and that's like that I think it gave me the motivation when I was seeing the reactions for my sets. Like everybody was like asking, "Oh, when you going on?" And I was like, "Oh, because because the boys I were doing it are doing it with, they're fucking amazing DJs, and I respect them so much as artists as well." And here, and when folk were saying that they were want to hear me play, I was like, "Oh, fucking, maybe I'm alright at this." Do you know what I mean? G unit, exactly. <laughs> 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 but I mean, it's it's been a crazy journey, man, and and I think I think coming for that, like the stresses that I went under to to make sure every day had the best night, even if I wasn't, mm-hmm. it was worth it for me to see folks smiling, getting a fucking tattoo, or coming back every time. Because air had had nothing of high quality for 30 Aye. years. See, see, like even see, even before that, when you were younger, right? Because yeah. we are talking. See, when we get somebody in that's no for Glasgow, we are kind of a bit like, oh, like, <laughs> like what, 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 what's it like where you're from? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Darren Fox came in, he's from Edinburgh, and we were asking him about the unders, and he said they had unders, but he didn't go. So, did Air have unders? Aye. Did you go? Aye. How was it? Shit. Uh, but there, there was never, it was, so it was like an under 18s phone party. We would go that to. That is what I'm talking about. Aye, that's we what I'm would talking go about. There, and, and then um, I went to one the next. Oh, when was the next one? Because it, it, it ended up the clubs would compete for the unders as well because it's aye. a massive market and that's how you get folk into your club. Aye. The next generation's coming, do you know aye, what I mean? Because it's, yeah, it's yeah, a young yeah, man's sure. game, do you know what I mean? I was so, nearly swallowed up by the garage. The so, uh, mate, or something. I was the in the garage, garage. mate. I was, uh, <laughs> we were talking about this. We have <laughs> competitions about how many lasses you could kiss and that. Aye. Disgusting, mate. Really disgusting scenes, actually. A lot of germs flying about, but that's, that's absolutely horrible. But um, actually, you had unders. Ah, you did that. Um, they, were, they, were, they were all right. With yeah. the, these... Were they as mad as what I just said there? Were they, were they as I'm not, sexually I driven as that? One, I, I, no, I, I, no, I, no, it was, I, and there was one called The Ark, I just remembered about it doing the Citadel, but that was like the most well-known one, I actually, you just remi- reminded me, and we'd go and get a J2O, and then oh, we're like, oh, ah, you're like, ah, you, are you going to kiss her tonight? Uh, I'm like, ah, I've only... You're just standing in the corner, like, aye, 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 all right, me and my design, I wish, I wish, you know, that's, I was like Tinder before. It was me. Tinder aye. was it? You know yeah, what I mean? It's like real life Tinder. Uh, him? Nah. <laughs> swipe, swipe left. Nah. Swipe right. Uh, mate, I remember I used to go to clubs and go out with rappers and be like, no, I'll be like, right to the pal, right next to him. You like rappers? Nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> bold as brass. Me ever seen all that? Have you get Have you got any more pals? See, <laughs> 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 that's how it was. Everybody, I, and like, need to get the feelings so like, Everybody knew it was all business in there. <laughs> <laughs> there was me, there was me loving there, mate. It was strict, no, it, it was strictly business in there, man. <laughs> um, I, it, do you just have MSN in that as well? Oh, Bebo in that. Oh, sending, mate. Uh, do you know that? Do you know the, gold, the golden fuck. era? I don't know. See, uh, I went out in the MSN days. I used to be the guy that made like Bebo skins and oh. call it like again when you get colour in your MSN name I mean, and all that. Always, the wee magic you've dot and that. A showman, mate. mate. <laughs> <laughs> in my bud, about 30 birds in my PM and that Aye. as well. I went out with this uh, bud called Nicole and I split up with two weeks later and I went out with another bud called Nicole and I never changed my name. And I was like, <laughs> mate, I was the worst cunt ever for that. By the way, the folks slated me for no, that. You don't, see, at that age, you don't actually really understand like empathy or anything. No, like that. you so don't. You're just like, ah, she doesn't want to get me, fuck it. <laughs> just <laughs> Anybody else changing this? Exactly, <laughs> Any on the calls out there? <laughs> <laughs> just look, just searching. <laughs> just searching. Any Nicole's want to go to I'm trying, I can't be asked changing my name again. Have any idea all the attack? Alex, I I don't know how many times I've tried to like, no recently because it's long gone, but I remember for years I would be like, try, try, and, try and beat, no, try and be and being like, can you get in? 
can I get? Oh, imagine what would be in that. Imagine the stuff that would be in that if you could open up it's, people. It'd be like. They should do that one day. End of the last day of Earth or something. <laughs> last we're, day we're firing up Bebo again. <laughs> that would my, make it worth it. My one, I can't remember. I had like a mention of my name on, on the tap, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, it was obviously just graphic, like a oh, graphic oh. design couldn't done it. Well, and it was uh, a mention uh, of that. Fire, fire fireworks, fireworks marketing. <laughs> and then, aye, that fucking program, fireworks. Aye, but then it was like, uh, like it made it a like forward slashes and like uh, brackets and that one of them unreal oh, unreal the tune was like Gary McKev yes ah, 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 ah. Ah. <laughs> what there's a name for that it's like a certain type of art it's like A-C-A-S uh, you know what I'm talking about I, 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 ah you know I'm glad somebody knew me I'm sweating there mate um, Joseph knows anyway weird bits of information and, <laughs> and, and all that I'm like Joseph <laughs> you, <laughs> ma- you <laughs> must know bro you must know um, but I want to talk about rolls and beans <laughs> no um, so you like so you started all these club nights and that but I so was it was it for you about like I want to so it wasn't so much about you it was more like air like you wanted to like aye. put a both obviously it's always been about air really aye. mate and I'm no I'm no self obsessed I don't have it in me to be like self obsessed and self like, like driven aye. 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 it's like I'm ambitious and determined but it's usually for Nine times out of ten, it's for somebody else. So, because like, all my tu- a lot of my tunes are named after my pals that have got mm-hmm. me to where I'm, um, or places that have meant a lot to me. Like Subby, I, I like talk about Subby all the time because it shaped me into what I'm as well. I'm just like, and I'm an emotional person as well, just because what I've been through, like getting brought up by my mum from mm-hmm. a, a young age, I'm so emotional, mate. Right, so aye. like everything is emotionally driven, and it's like. I'm I'm glad I done it for myself now because I, I used to struggle with that big time. It is being selfish, see, being selfish. I can't do it, and and it used to be my downfall because fucking nine times out of ten, folk will be selfish around you as well, and it's hard to it's hard to be in music if you're no mm. because someday will just they'll just uh, cut your own grass, you know what I mean? They will, yeah, it just don't honestly, don't mate, ah, yeah, it's, it's bad. Yeah. So I struggle with that for a bit. And now I've kind of learned to put my energy into myself. I've started doing better, but then, like, I'll just pick and choose my moments, you know what I mean? It's fucking, it's weird, mate, mm-hmm. weird. But I, it's, mate, the journey's been fucking mental, like, mm-hmm. to this point. And like, what you were saying about the club nights and that, it's like, that was, that was just, like, a motivational change to push me further into this is what I want to do and I've made the right decision as well Aye. see see, just <clears throat> you were saying like and like, especially when you're DJing it's hard hard to keep yourself unselfish sort of because you probably see everybody else like just try everybody's fighting for these limited limited spots right yeah, Aye. Yeah. so like but seeing the other side of the coin who's some people like see you're just coming up before or this uh, this tell me something good and all that see just mm-hmm. in between that has there been any DJ specifically that you can go he's fucking done me a good turn he's helped me out he's Patrick, I'd say Patrick Topping right. for sure, mate. He's fucking so down to earth, dead sound. Just just talks to you like a normal mm-hmm. guy as well. And him and probably oh, the boy that taught me how to produce, Roos. He, he, I used to do ten with him. He done all the graphics and that for ten. And if it wasn't for him, I would probably be a teacher, definitely. Because so, he, right? he gave me my first mixer to make me learn DJing. And he get, he taught me how to use Ableton, the software to produce. So if it wasn't for him, mate, Mick like Mick, I, I, Mick Pricker would be back. exactly. <laughs> Mick Pricker would be in force, mate. <laughs> so like, I, I, we roost, man. <clears throat> I try and do as much for him as I can. The very first record I put out, I got him on the vocals. Uh, he does a lot of graphics still. So see if there's any like we club nights. I'll I'll say to them, or oh, this is who used to do. 10 and I'll show them the look at it and it looks fucking still stands up to this day so I'll say to these any wee club shows that I'll get I'll be like here's my graphic designer and I'll be like that's Roos and I've got all my lot of business off mm-hmm. that so I do try and take care of them all as Aye. well mate so nah, it's, it's just like giving back do you know what I mean whereas, whereas I feel like some some well artists DJs whatever it is chart artists doesn't really matter a lot of them forget where they what's happened and how they've got there and and I like I would be embarrassed if I had man because oh. like and as well see the first time uh, I was playing in Radio 1 Patrick said I was for Glasgow and I was like ah, mate you fucking you better <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I cannot say you know I'm for Glasgow you know I've literally been waiting years to like, get air on the map and that <laughs> exactly mate exactly mate, but see, see see like for people that see people that like are Scottish like 
They're like, yeah, it's I know, go. I know, mate, I know. See if you were on holiday or something, like, no, they know or whatever, right? But see if you're on holiday, would you be like, ah, I'm fair? And then if they were like, where's that? And would you Me go, oh, does mate, that I, kill still, you? I still say it <laughs> every <laughs> single <laughs> week. See, like, you live, you live, in, knows, you, you live in England now? Ah, right, right, so, like, England. see, like, doing, like, does anybody, is anybody like, oh, I air? Or are they like, what, what, say? Air, air beach? Air, no, like, almost air like nabdy, in almost really? nabdy. Uh, nah, nabdy knows, nabdy knows where it is. Uh, there was, we had the weirdest experience where we were, I was talking to my mum at like, the cashier in, at a supermarket and the woman went, are you for air? And she was, but, uh, and I had English, are you from air? <laughs> and I was like, uh, aye. <laughs> She's like, oh, you used to have family there. And we were like, uh, you're the first person that I've ever met. Aye, aye, aye. Like, <laughs> family friend in that now. But um, nah, nobody knows, mate. I always just say, because like, folk will go, oh, you're from Glasgow. And ah, I'm like, uh, no, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say I'm like half an hour outside Glasgow. Yeah, and they, every week, mate, because Nick cunt knows uh, what it is. Oh, just, they just think you're saying here in an English accent. Aye, exactly, yeah. exactly. I'm from here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is it a bit like that? Like that? You don't sound like <laughs> <laughs> Guys. New sponsor alert, another klaxon in the background. Did you like the last one? The, it was, it was, I was thinking Mary, I was like, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Uh, but that's what you I was thinking. You went for pure danger. You went for like, um, like a police siren yeah, or something, yeah. I don't know what, what was going on there. Yeah, but a snitch oh, It was like a, the mad things in the war, the mad, uh, well. I think that's what was going on. But anyway, troops, new sponsor, as you'll see, boom, boom. Offsprings. You might have seen them on Instagram and that. I've seen I had seen them previously before I they even sponsored that. this. Seen seen the hood, the hoodies, the t-shirts. Let me tell you guys, right? I'm gonna tell you a wee story about um I used to don't know if I've mentioned it, I used to live in Vietnam. <laughs> and I used to buy this mate called Hades, right? Which is like is that Latin for hell? <laughs> Hades. 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 Well, there we go, Hades, but, but I know, every day's a school day, but I used to get these t-shirts and I, I mailed them when I got back, I was like, you need to send me t-shirts, because mm -hmm. of the quality, it's like this stretchy sort of cotton, it's unbelievable, and, and when I opened this package up the other day, and felt the quality, the stretchiness, but also the soft cotton, mm -hmm. I could not believe my luck, guys, I was actually... Hard as a rock. <laughs> oh, baby, I, as soon as I took it out of the packaging, hard, bricked, Aye. bricked up. You have problems with that, don't you? Uh, really, just, 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 uh, just the minor things in my life, <laughs> I, um, but this is not a minor thing. It's all springs. Troops, Jamie's repping the hoodie. Pink. The pink hoodie. Is that baby pink? I would say this is, I pastel, baby. Pastel? <laughs> <laughs> Which is French for pastel. <laughs> um, so, so, look, hoodies, t shirts, I'm telling you, the quality is air trips. I would not like you. Best of gear. So, go check them out. Their, um, their Instagram, their website, and that will be all in the description. So, go check them out. And always, you're getting money off oh. with Ellie's gaff, right? So, when you're checking out on their website, when you're buying that hoodie, that t shirt, whatever, when you're checking out the code Riley's Gaff 20. R E I L L Y S G A F F two zero. Don't write the words two zero Aye. like a mug because you're not going to get the discount code and you're just trying to be smart, right? <laughs> Try to undermine you. Evan. Try to take the piss. <laughs> We're getting you discounts and that. You joking? But go check them out, troops. Tell them Riley's Gaff sent you. Give them in, in, uh, inbox them on Instagram and say, "Hey, Riley's Gaff sent me here." Cheers. Hey Jamie. Hey Evan. Did I ever tell you I play? Video games? You've, you've told me before, yeah. But I never told you why. Are you going to tell me now? I play video games to escape reality. It's a sad thought. It's really fucking sad. But reality is a bit. Reality is overrated. Reality is so mainstream. Reality is hell. <laughs> and reality is what you can escape, baby, with the Real Estate Investment Club. Now look, now there's obviously a lot of tokens out there. Some fungible, some non-fungible. Oh. And who wants a fungible total? Oh, People coming up and funging all your total. <laughs> White mastery. You want, you, you want to get a token that nobody can funge with, right? And where you're gonna get Primo, NFTs is with the Real Estate Investment Club. Now, 
you know what an NFT is by now? I know I'm sure you've seen the wee the wee digital artwork, the monkeys, mm-hmm. what a celebrity selling them. Yep. Gary V is mm-hmm. balls deep in them. That's when you know it's the future. If Gary V is involved, you better get an early baby boy. So these NFTs aren't just pawns. Oh, we pawns the NFT. Oh, some guy in fucking Bells Hill made an NFT and he's selling out his back garden. It's not like that. The guy creating these worked on GTA. Oh, worked on Red Dead. Two of the biggest video game franchises ever. Possibly. Two, aye. Two of the biggest. Maybe COD. Maybe I don't know what the hell. What the hell's going on there? But. If you buy an NFT through the Real Estate Investment Club, that's going to double up as a membership. Gold and who dust. doesn't want to be a member of a club, especially a real estate investment one? Mm. And what that's going to do is going to give you access to their meta city. So, you know, metaverse, you're walking about, the owner of a non-fungible token, you're going to be a god in there. Not only will you be a god, you'll also have access to plenty of other things, such as... Worldwide investment opportunities? Worldwide. Is that real worldwide? Have you ever left Scotland? Well, no. Well, now you can with worldwide investment opportunities. Also, education, community and networking. Oh, community. The pillars of society. Common unity. Common unity. That is very, very true. And I like that. And that's very emotional. Um, also, in, in, in real life events, you know. So we're not just in the digital world. Oh, I love it. We're also bringing it to the real world so there's g- and also giveaways man and just like Beltalux they're giving away Rolex watches Ooh. Ethereum payments towards mortgages I could he- really help you out but they're also giving back with some charity donations beautiful and some holiday opportunities gorgeous imagine you just go imagine you just buy this non-fungible token next thing you know you're you're sitting in Las Vegas Nevada <laughs> with a cold one yeah and um Think about all the people surrounding you and they will have no idea that they're in the presence of a man with a non-fungible token. They are all sitting there with a fungible token. You, everybody's funging or everybody's talking in Vegas and you're just sitting there with your protected fungible token. Non- non-fungible token. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Protected. Like that. Like that. Don't let anybody fund your token, like guys. That. Get on to the Real Estate Investment Club. Get down to the description. You'll see all the details. If you're into this stuff, the meta, if you're a... If you're a, f- a kid from the future, yeah, then get involved. Cheers. Evan, I wish this watch, it's, it's all electronic and stuff. I wish it just swept. Do you know what I mean? I, then I click, 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 click. I wish Do you know they've actually like... already invented that? How? <laughs> Ever heard of a Rolex brother? I wish I could get one of them. I, well, couldn't, I couldn't buy one, but... No, nah, they're very expensive, nah, mate. they're too expensive. But... Better Lux is bridging that gap, baby boy. Oh, I've no money. Rolexes are made for princes and kings. <laughs> Not anymore. Better Lux are running competitions, guys. Giveaways in the competition right now. Usually you'll get a big song and dance for us. We'll let the product do the talking, yeah? Mm-hmm. Now, as you'll be seeing on screen right now, guys, no the, the sub Marina baby. God, just hang. It's a Rolex baby boy And it was in the studio About five minutes ago And we were all bricked up mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well I was I, And I don't think they were um, But I need to go and get that scene you guys um, But I, the Rolex was here Live in the flesh And you could enter this competition Go down to the description of this video Follow the links Go on the website And you can have a look at the competitions You can enter And you're getting money off of us You could have a Rolex on your hand Or even on your wrist where it belongs, baby. So get down in the description, guys. Use the discount code Riley's Gaff twenty five, and you'll get money off. How easy is that? Look at this beautiful watch swirling behind us. Can you believe that? That was in here, and it could be on you, baby. Troops, as always, the podcast is brought to you by G Four Claims. Have you been whacked in the fucking rear end? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you. I mean your car. I mean your car. Are you been a naughty boy? Stay focused. Yeah, (laughs) dirty. Um, So if you've been whacked in the rear end of your vehicle, um, you know, get in touch with G4 Claims. We'll sort it out. The process is free. Easy peasy. Take take the pressure off yourself. You've been involved in an accident that wasn't your fault. Get in touch with G4 Claims. All the info is in the description. Troops, this episode is also brought to you by Fierce Fitness. 
So Fierce Fitness is a group set up by Natalie, um, and she is like a qualified personal trainer for years and years and years. And if you want to get fit for this summer, right? She's running boxer size classes in Glasgow. So any level can join, all age groups. There's young girls there, there's old women. I mean, like elderly women. Um, there's group sessions. You can split the cost with your pals. It's easy peasy. You want to get in shape this summer, then go and visit them on Instagram, fiercefitness underscore GLA. Um, everything will be in the description, guys. So you can just go down there and check. They're on Facebook. You can join their group. Um, it's brilliant, man. Everybody's getting in shape for this summer. So go get in touch with them, join their classes, and get that summer body, baby. Cheers. Yeah, I'm, I wanted to ask, now, now you were saying, um, like, you were, you've been through it all, like you've done fucking gigs and it's two people and that. Mm. Could, is there any of them that stick out to you as being like, memorably like bad if you know what i mean like no bad is in the, the sense but just like what kind of like you're like what am i actually doing here like why am i why am i doing this um i a few <laughs> a, hunters actually <laughs> you ever heard of the air show doing an air obviously <laughs> no right is so it's glasgow? just no <laughs> it's just to say hi just actually the glasgow famous but it's famous right um that the planes and that? Aye, mate. So there's like 150,000 folk. Wait, did I tell you about this guy knows everything? Mate, 150,000 folk go down there, right? Aye. To the beach, and the planes go up and down the, the beach of the oh, sea. Right, yeah. um, the, and then there's like, a, there's like a farmer's show in that. And like the farmers, right, in here. But a lot of the farmers are usually fucking mental anyway. But we were DJing, and they all come in with their jean shoe combo and all that. And, uh, mate, that this one guy <laughs> came up to me. It was like, uh, it was like, I think the club finished at half two, and this was about quarter to two. And he came up to me, and he put his arm up, right, big fucking firm arm, <laughs> and he was like. See if you don't play Bruno Mars Uptown Funk, I'm gonna turn this club upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, but I was above him, and I have a bouncer there, and I'm at. Uh, who are you talking to, you prick? Have you found definitely when you see David Arango, mate. What a like, out of pocket song he want to be in that aggressive. Mate, and that's what I mean. Maybe, like, maybe, he needs that. That, maybe he needs that to calm him down. He's on the heat. Aye, aye, aye. Things like that. Just put it on your phone, phone mate. Chill out, man. Go sit down. Aye, and he's holding like a fucking bucket. A sandcastle bucket full of drink, and he's like, ah, you better fucking play that. Big purple fist. You do And um, that and fucking Gold Cup weekend as well in there. And it's either you either get all the Celtic fans in or you get all the Rangers fans in. And I, I can't play any of their tunes because I'd probably get chucked off. Uh, so they uh, come in. Sash. Mate, I ain't in the guy. guy guys are uh, simply the best now. Uh, uh, no, mate, I'll no play it. The amount of fucking fights I'm nearly getting because I will not play their tunes as no well. Yeah. You know what I used to do? I'm a very sneaky man, actually. What I used to do, see, like you get a DJ at like a fucking 30th or that or like a, an 18 for whatever, right? See if I wanted a song on, I used to go up and say, whoever. Or like, so it was your birthday. I'd go, I Jamie, the birthday boy, he's requested, right? And he really needs it on. That's he's requested, it, and then they would just play yeah. it, mate. Britney Spears Toxic or something. Aye, Jamie, <laughs> Jamie's dying here, Britney Spears Toxic. Aye, Aye man, I used to <laughs> very <laughs> quite manipulative uh, young That's man. Clever, mate. But hey, you hustler. Go, I'm a hustler, mate. That's how we're here. That's how we're on. We're on top, yeah. So, see, to be honest, I, I they want to go back to tell me something good, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we, touched, we touched on it earlier, but so. See, so just taking out all the like compliments and the notoriety in that, right? I was wondering, because I heard this quote that you can always be a victim of your success, but mm -hmm. you can never be a victim of your happiness, right? Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, do you feel like a happier person since all that? Do you think you've changed inside or do you think you're just the exact same? Like, how has that affected your, <clears throat> your, your how you feel daily? Um, because it is, I mean, it's like, no, just like you got a tune that, I don't know, right? It's like, it's, it was like, just exploded. Annoying. So that's a lot to mentally like, cope yeah. with. Ministry, I said, best tune. Yeah, so. yeah, I, I um, struggled with it at first, man, mm -hmm. big time. Uh, and it, the only reason I struggled with it was because of the amount of press and folk that, I would never have talked to, I was now talking to. And there's these folk interviewing me and I'm like, I'm not going to talk to you in a year because I don't want to release a tune like this for ages because of what it was like. <laughs> and it's like, then you feel like there's folk like 
tweeting about your tweets or like our like radio or TV, like, oh, you and Vicar put this up on Twitter and it's like, oh, I've got folk watching me now Aye. as well. Mm-hmm. So like, at first it was quite overwhelming just because the press, the press I struggled with because I don't know, I just didn't, like, I'm fine with press, mm-hmm. I don't mind it at all. Like, things like this, I, I, mm-hmm. I like doing them, but that way it was too much and because I'd, I started to resent the record because I didn't want it to go in the charts, I then was like, oh, I can't be fucked with this anymore. Aye. Like, I, I just want this to roll over because I was releasing music straight after Tell Me Something Good and nobody was listening to it because the spillover uh, fit it. Exactly. I know. So it's a- that was frustrating for Aye. me because I'm like, the tune I put out after Tell Me Something Good, I thought was better than Tell Me Something Good Aye. as well. And I was like, fucking need these listening to it. I want Aye. them to listen to it. But now I've, I've made peace with it. Like, now I'm, I'm, it's kind of cool because I've released these tunes and now if MD really is a fan, they, they dig on like my Spotify, they'll find these tunes later on and they'll be like, oh, I didn't know I really start, do you know what I mean? And you're probably getting more, like, <clears throat> if there's like younger people now that would hear that and then start to like you and yeah. then, they, then they'll start being an MD Yeah, that's what you hope, mate. That's just like the, is like my music I've released is the hope that they'll come to gigs and it turns into ticket sales and then when they come and hear me as a DJ, that's when I show like my true self. Like when I played all night long in sub club, never played like hardly any of my own records. It was all, oh, I've been going to subby for 10 years. And it's like, that was how I wanted that club to sound for 10 years. I've been building those tunes up. Like I wasn't going to play tunes that I'd made or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I played a few, but there was, it was none of like the main ones as everybody thinks. And that for me was like, fucking hell this is why i've done this like this is what i've been waiting for is five hours in subby just in charge of the full night and i started with like jay dilla and mf doom and ambient music and every i played every genre under the sun and it was fucking that that that's why i'm glad tell me some goods put me out there because it's hard to break through obviously and it's put me on this it's put me on this platform that now I can start doing cool shit like mm. my own record label or I want to run a festival in here next year. Like, just I'm able to do that because of it. And that's why I never will say, oh, I hate that record or right. I'm, I'm so, I wish it never happened. It's became it's, more than a song. Now, exactly. It? Mate. It's, it, it has been, but I'd say it's like, <clears throat> I don't know if happiness is the right word, mate. It's like, it's accomplishment. Like, aye, see, aye. see. Like, validation that like you're like, good like you earned that shit it's like eight year mate of sacrificing fucking relationships and time with my family time with my mates because i was in the house making tunes or no going on holiday being skint all the time like everything i put myself through became worth it when you like uh, yeah, when it's you payoff, when you, yeah, it's like uh, you've made it, mate, and and that I would say it's an accomplishment. It's like it's like getting in a fucking jacuzzi. Do you know what I mean? So getting in a hot tub, you're like, ah, it's, it's happened. It's happened. Aye. Aye. That, it's more like that, mate. Could I wouldn't you? say it's like over on. Aye. Oh, I'm the best ever. Aye. Like it's, it's just Aye. fucking chilling, man. Could, could you tell us about the festival now? I mate. So <clears throat> I've never talked about this. Is like an exclusive because I've never been able to talk about it properly, but. So where the air show is, there's a big area called the Low Green and see Street Rave that I was talking about earlier. So Street Rave was like a night when the Hacienda was going off in the 90s, like er, er, late 80s, early 90s, and it's still running to this day 30, 40 years later. And there was a, there's a place on the beach called, it was called the Pavilion. It's called Pirate Peach now. It's a kid's play right. bit, right? Aye. So it was like chips and curry next That's time. Hangar 13. So it was a Pavilion, then it became Hangar 13. And that venue, for me, was my muse. Like, the fact that Air had something like that, mm-hmm. and then I grew up and it was just full of shite. That's why I started 10 as well. That's what mm-hmm. I mean. It was my muse to put high quality dance music back into Air. Um, so on that site, there's a big, massive grassy bit down the beach. And... Um, I want to, well, I'm more or less certain I've got permission and shit like that. I'm just going lineups and budgets and everything like that. Going to put a festival with the pavilion in the background of the festival doing the beach. Like, it'll, the because. setting will be fucking unbelievable. And nobody's, to the, to the scale that I'm going to do it at, nobody's done it ever. 
so right. that that's like my that's so it. see when before i got my management i was getting approached for all these folk and they were like oh tell us your plans and and then i was like this is my madison square garden every day like what no ibifa no dc10 no amnesia no super club but no america and i'm like no a fucking festival in here <laughs> aye exactly aye and that's what i used to say that's my madison that's square class, garden mate, mate aye. Yeah. and that it'll be a homecoming because <clears throat> it's shite like after uh, I'm playing at Fly this weekend, open air, and after that I'm known Scotland for five months. Are you know? Nah, Where mate, I'm just aware. Everywhere? I'm just uh, Malta, Croatia, Ibiza. Playing hideout? Hideout, hideout, hideout yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing Lost and Found, uh, Ireland, uh, Australia in that time as well before I come back, maybe America, and then after the five months is up, we've got like a, a takeover, which I don't think I'm meant to say, but I can even put it out, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, and then next year it'll be i'll probably have another break after they the take over like the homecoming tour and next year i'll um do the festival and that'll be like i'll be dying well i've no dj in there i've no dj in there since that's what i mean and i need to put it out soon as well like because it's next year man next summer but um is that like a quick like see like it being next year is that like oh fuck that's soon aye aye and my heat and my heat that's it mate aye and and my full life is just a calendar and like that's why I got my wee brother on because he deals with all that now, and I'll just ask Rory, mate, where are we is this that weekend? You? Was uh, that killing you? Oh, mate, like, like, can you imagine? Like it? travel, see the travel all the time, and they're like, "Oh, we, we, what train do you want? What hotel do you want to stay in?" And I'm like, just fucking book it. But they need to ask me as well mm-hmm. to see what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So like, I had to get a travel company, and then Rory, my wee brother, he just is on the WhatsApps, and he'll just phone me and he go, "Right, do you want this or this? Right, sound it's done." And that's like, fuck it. It means I can focus on music because it's actually been about properly about four months since I made music because I've been so into the DJing again. Aye. So it's, now I can, I've got more time. That's what I'll use it as. But I, the festival, mate, it's just going to be... Because I actually won't have... By the time that comes around... When was the last time I DJed in there? 2019? To... It'll be four years since I properly mm. DJed in an air in a club. Um which will be hopefully I'm hoping it'll go well and it'll be like a homecoming like I'm finally back in here do you know what I mean and then um, because a a few months uh, like two months ago I was in here just seeing my pals and then I put up my Instagram so I phoned one of the bars and I was like can I just come and DJ in your bar for a laugh and see how many folk turn up it was a Wednesday night (laughs) I put up my story at five o'clock at night I was at doing a pop up at the smoking goat in here for a laugh Um, Come if you want, basically. <laughs> Come if you want. Basically, mate. And I was just on this wee controller in the corner and uh, I said I was on for nine and by half nine the place was at capacity on a Wednesday <laughs> night. They were fucking, oh, it was unreal, cool. It must be cool just today. That's like, it's like so Dave cool, Chappelle mate. on that day, shit like that. They're just like, I'm coming to their set. So and they're cool, like, mate. Oh my God. So cool. I, I used to see uh, like, Mad techno sets up like mad boiler room things that Aye. were like just in chippies, not that's, what I mean? that's 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 <laughs> kind of what it was like. Aye, as well, I remember yeah. seeing that uh, like eats everything doing yeah, a set yeah, in a yeah, chippy. Yeah, yeah. I love here. Yeah. I people love that set, mate. Like Aye, so that, I, I, I think it, the chip shop made it as Unreal, well. Uh, and he's, he's like the right guy. For Aye, that, Aye. he's so fucking. It looks like he walks in one. He's <laughs> Aye, exactly, exactly. He's the first cunt I've ever seen in Subby. He's the first like techno cunt I've ever seen. Mate, first, 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 so sound. First, I'm playing with him on Friday there. That's Friday. I'm playing with him. He's. Sound this kind of and does he eat everything? No, he's uh, ah, he does. He's oh, um, no, I'm playing with him in London. Oh, London on Friday. Nice one, I remember the first, the first like techno sort of event or anything like that. The first guy I ever seen like headline Sven Vath, mate. Oh, no. And I had. I think I think I double dunty to marvelous shekels, mate. Oh, no. I just remember <laughs> these lights, and I was just like, I, I, I love this. Where shit. was it? It was at Riverside in like twenty. Oh, is it? Fourth, fifty, Aye, something p- way wrong. back, like one of the first. Fu- but it's been called Riverside. It's called like Electric Frog. Frog something Aye, like. yeah, it's yeah, one yeah. of the first ones. I, I was like, I. It was. It was so. It was so good. I think it was like. I think it was eighteen, seventeen, eighteen. Mine was the Archies. My experience Aye. at me. Aye. Aye. What were they? Mortal Kombat. Oh. In fact, I put the. Did you see the yes. picture of me? I found the picture of me on them Let's that night. That. Oh my! We can put it up. We can uh, show, okay. show us later. We can put it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Sh- you yeah, can I show, it show you. I want to show you it now, but <laughs> mate, mate, there's a picture of me and all, and I'm sitting in the subway. I'm sitting with Mick and Mick's face pure melted, and I'm sitting like that. 
and my ma, when I came in, my ma was like, what were you drinking last night? And I was like, eh, vodka Red Bull. And then she turned, she turned around to my dad and done, told you that's why he's, I just want that. Me and Monda really, like, don't want to believe it. No. But sometimes you give them too Sorry, much proof. Mom. Um, ah. Here, there's a picture of me that actually look, mind that picture of me in pages, oh, and I've got so black funny. lipstick on. I was on caps. Oh, I look yeah, like I look like a I look like Doc Cotton. Or like <laughs> <that, actually. laughs> well, I'm a vampire person. Look at that. Oh, 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 I seen that, that actually. Yeah, mate, that, mate. Mate. <laughs> it's like, it's like oh, heavy day. Love you, mate. <laughs> You're the best cunt. I remember, mate. The worst thing somebody can say to you at like a rave or that is here. Are you all right? Oh, oh, <laughs> mate, oh, I remember oh. I was I was seeing um, see Rebecca. Ah, yeah, mate, yeah, I was yeah. in I was in uh, SWG three seat, and that's obviously like. Yeah, yeah. So I had to get stocks right up for that one, and I just remember walking about, and now that way you can just feel sweat, just, oh, and it's like yeah. there's nothing you can do to stop it. It's just <clears> happening. <throat> I just remember walking up to cunts. I would I know like what's happening. They'd be like, all right, mate, and then they just be like that. Are you, are you all right? I'm like, I, I think so. That happened to you once, right? My pal goes, ah, mate, are you all right? And I was like, I how? And I was holding a bottle that was literally like, I'd squeezed it to like <laughs> millimetres like that, mate. And it was pure straight, just a mad pull. I was holding it, I was like, ah, I how? And he was like, look, and I was like, fuck's <laughs> up. <laughs> 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 I can't see that night in the arches of photo I showed you. I'd, wait, I, I don't know how many I'd had, but... Um, it was when the arches had all the lasers and I was in the dance floor and I felt like I felt like it was knee cunt in the dance floor with me. I was just standing in my cell, right? And I was looking at the lasers and I felt like they were gone in my brain. So I had my eyes shut, must have been for about 45 minutes, right? <laughs> but I hadn't I wasn't dancing. Just standing there like that as a statue. <laughs> and then like somebody like moved me like that and then I went like that. <laughs> and Snapped I was tip, man. looking about and then I turned round and then it was just hundreds of cunts and I, I was fully thought I was in that room myself. <laughs> Where the fuck am and then I? and then I got the Are you alright? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, ah, it's so awful. No, don't so but it's good. It's good. Skin's, it's just, skin's crawling and oh, you're like, you're like, right, No, you're saying about like that bottle, it's oh. I remember getting ripping and gaffing, I'd always sit with a pillow like that, mate. And oh, it was no. just so that Kieran does so, that. That's what my mate so does cozy, all the time. Mate. Yeah, so so cozy. Me, I swear like imagine I'm it. Pillar, by the way. I imagine it. Mate, <laughs> do, here, I get it, get it, right, try it, right. Now imagine you're ripping, right, and then <laughs> Oh, mate, look, is that not the best thing ever? Is that not? I'm actually starting to, I'm starting to feel a bit flame now. Mate, here, I'll tell you what, see Haymarket train station? Mate, see when I go there, I start getting fleeing again. I've been doing there, that. Just I've been doing, I've like been in nights out in Edinburgh and then had to get the train First back train there. Back. Like, oh, and you're just, oh, oh, oh your eyes mate. are black as fuck. You're just like, Phew. then you get in the train that's packed. Oh my God, mate, that's going I, on. You're like, oh, oh no, been families been, and mate, that. Oh. You've been out on the Sunday and then it's Monday morning, I, folk are commuting. Oh, train him to train him to here, and I'm sitting in the corner like that. Like oh. I, and I used to uh, fall asleep, but I would shout in my sleep and it would wake me up. But I was with my mate, right? I was in the corner and everybody was commuting it. Suits and briefcases and that, and I'm in the corner like that. Oh! <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I was like that to my mate. I was like, you need to fucking stop that. You keep waking me up. And he was like, ah, it's fucking you, you cunt. And I'm like, ah, oh! Oh and everybody's God, just mate. staring at me, mate. Oh, and I'm really terrified, mate. Honestly, oh, you made these turn around. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was in the corner, so I think I probably tried to do it and then realised I was in the corner. And I was like, ah, it was me. The <laughs> I, must have been me, mate. Sorry. Um, but obviously, we're talking about um, sell me something good and the kind of might be negative sides, but yeah. there's a lot of positives, yeah. Uh. And. Sometimes you get to rub shoulders with the stars, baby. Tell me about that rock DJ. Tell me. Oh, how did mate. you end up with Robbie Williams, oh, mate. mate? Tell me about so this. So fried, by the way. So <laughs> my my management got an email saying, "Oh, Robbie Williams has requested you into DJ at his. He was doing an art exhibition on like the history of rave or something like that and selling oh, selling stuff." Which I thought was quite cool, as it yeah. sound. But he was doing an after party in this place in London. And he was like, "Oh, I want I want you in to come." I was like, what the fuck does Robbie Williams want to do? (laughs) What? It's mental. (laughs) So I turns up at this gaff, and it was quite cool, to be fair. The sound system was banging. It looked like an old church. Oh, right, aye. There was a lot of fuddy duddies there, but it was was good. I was was just there for aye. 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 And uh, I I come off, and uh, he walks up, and he's like, Ewan? I'm like, all right, mate. What's happening? (laughs) He's like... 
How are you? Well, well, and then he would start talking about. I, I was, I was trying to be pure chill, but I was just like looking at him like you. I, like, I want to touch his face. Ah, I just made sure. It's like Madame Two Swords. Like, I thought the forty folk were gonna think I was at Madame Two Swords. Um, and then um, he's like, "Oh, what age are you?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm twenty eight. And I said to him, like, "I'm glad this happened to me at this age because if it was four years ago, I probably would have been a fucking nutcase. Mm-hmm. But I've mellowed out a bit." And he's like. Ah, he puts his arm in me and he's like ah, embrace the madness <laughs> oh and Robbie that's a cool line that. Jesus Christ <laughs> mate it actually did it made me want to go back to what I was like by the way it made me want to go <laughs> mental I fucking you know, he's like, like, oh. I'm like, grab that <laughs> Imagine you've just done that to me. Whoa! Oh, oh, whoa! <laughs> that's, me, that's me woke up. Me. Me being this, oh, I'm a straight edge now. Uh, yeah. I only drink water at gigs. Uh, Embrace the madness. Whoa! <laughs> see how... That's brilliant. See, um... <laughs> Ah, yeah, that's, that's so funny. Robbie Williams, I couldn't believe man. that when I see it. Treat it did look like, like a mad fake king, not a mean secret. It did, like... And somebody tagged me on Twitter saying weird inter- weird, weird encounters. Ah, yeah, it is. It actually <laughs> is. It's just two, weird two worlds you don't expect no, to be I, I was just thinking when you said that, like, I'm at old Ray thing, like, he was fake, like, North England and that. Ah, he probably he was. was, yeah, was yeah, I was, man. I was, uh, do you know, see when you meet folk like this, you're like, I try and, um, because I've been so obsessed with music for that long and I like like digging in the origins and all that, I try and like test their knowledge to see like, what, what do you know about Rave then? And I was mm. like, oh, and then do you know him and do you know him? And see, to be fair, he knew all his shit. Like yeah, house yeah, music yeah. was well into it, mate. I so he was dead. He was so sound, mate. Uh, Honestly, just pure chill. He was like, Keep doing what you're doing. I'd love to write. I, he said, I'd love to write a tune me one day and all that. Imagine that. And then he was so like, I know. And then he was like, uh, that's kind of why I never really you. said, oh, aye, I'd love to. I was like, what are we going to do together? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then he, he invited me and my manager to some countryside retreat they have and they all go mental, I think. So, yeah, it was just, I probably, I Why not? Embrace the madness. Embrace the, <laughs> you've got to embrace the madness. It's a so mantra. Like, I might bring out a tune called that. <laughs> embrace embrace the madness. madness. Robbie vocals, <laughs> man. Mate, aye, that's, that's crazy, but... Robbie Williams, I just can't... See, when I seen that picture, hey, I was just weird. like, how the fuck... I, I sent it to you, that You've happened. made it, baby. <laughs> aye, he sent me it, I was like... <laughs> excellent talking point. <laughs> um, but... Just before we wrap things up, yeah, we do have some questions for you, mate, from yeah. the patrons. Shout oh, out to Remember Troops, if you want to be able to ask guest questions, um, sign up for the Patreon, yeah? But aye, so the first question, mate, just a wee general one. Uh, Jack Hanna wants to know advice for anybody just wanting to get into mixing and producing. Well, I, <clears throat> I started, um, I got a wee shitty mixer from, it was like an all-in-one thing to jog wheels, and it was like, bigger than like, a fucking birthday cake almost it was mm. tiny uh, and I had a HP mini for uni for teaching and I just YouTubed everything like got right into YouTube became obsessed with it I think if you're no obsessed it's hard to get through that barrier of being a casual kind of just want to mix tunes to my mates in a kitchen or something like that. if you're no obsessed with it I wouldn't have went through the limits so try and get as obsessed with it as you can research the origins find what kind of music you like mixing and then my next step would be start your own night start your own shit mm-hmm. because you there's priceless things come out of that that you'll never even think come out of it as sure, well and everybody's right. experience is different but if you don't start your own shit then you're going to be messaging promoters all the time. Oh, can I get a set? Oh, can uh, I play through you? And like, it never, it never works. Because uh, like, usually promoters are in with their pals and that's why they've done it for them. So start your own shit. Try it. And I believe in yourself. Big uh, time. Believe in yourself, Trips. Great answer. Mm-hmm. Um, so next <clears> guy, <throat> a very respectable gentleman, a Fanny Destroyer. He wants <laughs> to know, he wants to know how many keep ups can you do? Uh, oh well you could tell uh, us or we can put it to the test oh no you're having a laugh I've no kicked a ball in ages are you going to make me are you staying it as well more right, more sorry, one sorry, try sorry. if you fuck it you're out where, where, where are we going to go for it I think the big garage the big garage, garage. Oh, I'll get my tap on oh no 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 kicked a ball in ages wait I've got my my full kit on <laughs> Shinny's over there. Don't my boots, sir. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, let's go, let's go. Do you go. got a handicam? Right, guys. 
Wayne Rooney's uh, street striker. Um, no. We're Jamie Kelly, 15 striker. Right. <laughs> well, what we're going to do, you wanted to know Fanny Destroyer, back Fanny Destroyer. Um, you Cheers, wanted to know, Destroyer. You, we, you wanted to know how many keepers did you and Nick do? Well, we're going to put that to the test. Do you want to go first or no. last? Last. I'm going to see how you first. I'm shaking myself. Are getting a wee warm? Aye, get a wee No, I'm not getting a wee warm. I'm not getting a wee warm. You're starting as me. All the names are gone. Oh, it. Seven, eight, nine. Oh. <laughs> 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Ah, <laughs> bastard! You bastard! 21, Fanny Destroyer, 21. What did you get, 22? 22. Oh, you yeah, bastard. There we are. Jamie's wanting to say it in dry, isn't it? Phone a friend. Phone a friend. Go on, beat it. Ah, ah. <laughs> so there you go, Fanny Destroyer. I mean, how was it 21? Aye, mate. Respectable. I guess. Uh, respect I nearly like, fucked it as well. We were saying there's a lot of pressure, see, when like. There's a lot on the line. Man. Champions Aye. League music was playing in my ears and that. <laughs> I actual think, like, we actually were shaking ourselves today, keep you upset. Imagine what it's like walking out into like, a cup oh, final. Oh, you know what I mean? what like, a, like an actual football, like proper, proper, proper. Champions League. Nah. Um, but I back to the questions, mate. So, um, L Stewart wants to know, I'm positive, she says, I'm positive you must hate this question, which is always a great start to a question. <laughs> um, but why don't you like to play any of your old tunes at Raves? <clears throat> be interesting to what tune she means because oh. I play why don't you play tell me something good because I can't no, be kidding. fucked <laughs> <laughs> that's right that is, you need to do somebody is... asked me that and I have to reply to him just saying I can't be fucked mate what about an alternate version tell me something uh -huh. tell me something bad like screamo scream, somebody, screamo somebody, that. somebody yep. um, somebody tweeted with like a, one of my old pictures and it was like um, I can't remember what you call that see when you invert a picture Right, what the colours? Aye. They make it, so make it aye. It's like pure blue and aye. like, aye, aye. I can't remember, there's a name evil, for it. Evil. So aye, tell me aye, something evil. good and they, they tagged it saying negative. evil. Negative, aye, it's like negative. Negative, negative that's but. it, aye. And that she said evil, Ewan McVicker says. <laughs> and it was like, tell me something bad and I quoted it saying this is my techno alias. <laughs> and, uh, evil McVicker. Aye, mate, aye, Mr McPricker. And then, uh, I, I, mate, I do play my own tunes but I like to give folk what they want, know what they need. Do you know what I mean? That's how I see it because I play, uh, I did a mashup with the, the Shaka Can vocal, I tell me something good over it that I play at gigs. Then they can sing along, but because I've no, I've just started playing festivals, I, I'm going to play it at festivals like the big ones and that because it's a festival tune, but the club shows, I don't. I look at a venue and I think about what music would suit this venue. Mm -hmm. No, I play the venue, know what they want to hear. And, the and what I, exactly, I, exactly. <laughs> so like, that's why, but see, to be fair, mate, I'd say I, I still play about six or seven of my own records in my sets every time. They maybe just don't know it's mine because they only know tell me something good or whatever, do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like, if folk were to listen back or they've took videos and they're listening to a tune, Nine times out of ten, I've played hundreds of my records in it, so it's no no entirely true, but uh, there's a wee bit of truth to it because I don't like playing Tell Me Some Good as much. Aye, aye. Mate, much I've it. actually got a question now that I've met you a bit and I understand how much you're into like the craft of like DJing and that, right? Yeah. Who, in your opinion, just doesn't he need to be a big name or whatever? Who's the most just talented DJ that you think you've ever just witnessed? Just like, like that you yeah. think? Whoa, there's a guy, um, a guy called Jerome Hill. He's like pure underground. He's got a label called Super Rhythm Tracks. And he, so we, we were playing at Bang Face. You ever heard of Bang Face? Right, it's fucking, it's in Southport in a Pontins. And like, 
it's rough man it's yeah. a 160 bpm gabber like <laughs> for, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. i was way out my depth but we there was an acid house stage and we got asked to play it and uh, the guy that was meant to be on before us josh post human he he left because covid had just uh, it was the last festival before covid and he left and that meant jerome hill was on before us and i was fucking shiting myself mate because every time i've seen him play he's like scratching his tunes are unbelievable and like he's like I'd say probably the most underrated DJ because no one, like not a lot of people, especially the, like the generation that I'm in and the, the fans I have, not like, not heard of him. And I'm like, you need to fucking see this DJ. So Jerome Hill, I'd say, is the guy, the guy when I've went blown away. Like, Aye. I can't even believe this is happening. Aye. Like, no, that's so good. Mate. Interesting. For, and <clears> I, I don't know, like maybe I'm speaking for you here, but like, do you struggle with how much you like the sort of underground side of things and away from the mainstream, but that tunes went so mainstream? Is yeah. it like a mad identity crisis sort of thing for you? Uh, yeah, I struggled with it loads. But then, so like the way you tell me something good went, I, like uh, my plan was this year, I'm going to sign with like, cool labels so my first release was with optimo who are like one of the most respected labels mm -hmm. the coolest in scotland probably and they've been around for 30 years as well do you know what i mean so that, that and that for me that was the first ever scottish label i signed with i respect them so much for about a decade i've been listening to them and that for me was like right you can see where i've went for and where i'm like intending to go and then i did a remix of joe goddard gabriel which was like another uh, anthem but like in the cool side and that's kind of where i'm go. i'm kind of playing the field mate like because if I, if you go too underground it's like scary it's and it's hard to get a platform nowadays especially because it's so djing it isn't anywhere near as cool as it used to be do you know what i mean Aye. it's like you've got folk in fucking towie being djs and it's like cheapened it a bit but i, I did struggle because i was like have i fucked this because to be genuinely happy in myself i want to do what i love and that wasn't he so i was like ah fuck i might have fucked it but it, see mate see the support for scotland like i'm glad i'm for scotland because folk just fucking get behind you no matter what and whatever way i'm going as long as i'm releasing like banging tunes folk no been caring because it's quite risky though because if you could spread yourself too thin jumping fucking labels and, and underground and mainstream folk just start get confused and are like what the fuck are you doing but they don't it, know it, why there's no identity exactly like, but, I don't but know. The, the response i've got for folk are like oh the energy in your tunes and it's like doesn't matter genre or tempo it's like oh we can hear it's you still don't worry and like that's that's what i'm Mate, like i'm doing no, it right no it's interesting right obviously um the last night i was sitting and i was just scrolling through and i was on your story mm -hmm. and i was sitting beside erin my girlfriend i was sitting and she couldn't even see what it was and like it was like a tune and then it would play then it was on to the next one the next one and she was like listening and she was like is that it sounds heavy good like just then she did they have any idea yeah, it was you yeah, yeah. and i do you know what i think it is we we love going to places where it's not just the same thing for four hours. It, it's yeah. like, like you're saying, you're trying to take these people on a journey for the minute they get in. And you're like, it's not just like, oh, I'll start with this and I'll end with this. And it's like, you you take them down and then back up that's and like it, speed yeah. up and then slow, you know. And there's an art to that. That's the there? art, mate. That's uh, the art of DJing. And like when I was DJing the commercial clubs, like see, you'd play, I could play fucking five Beyonce tunes, but see if I played the one that they didn't like, that food dance floor fucks off for a drink. Because right. the Furies where we DJed, there was a step down to the dance floor, so folk would purposely, oh, we're going to the dance floor, no, just be on the dance floor, and there was right. no drinks on it on the dance floor either. So uh. you're DJing to social groups and there's spicy cunts and there's moshers and then there's the birds that are all dolled up and you need to fucking work out a set that's getting them all on the dance get floor them all and letting them get pissed me. It's, me. it's like a, it's like an experiment is that the buzz like for me back then like, that's what was what it was because it must be like something like a no not like a negative way but like see like being able to just control it what i'm doing up here is making people no think about it but just want to dance exactly. like i'm an unexplainable aye, urge like aye. i just want to go and dance now. It's, it's like an experiment aye. in your eyes mate and you're like ah, right well we'll play some rock here and they'll come on and then we'll play hip-hop and we know they're gonna dance and then how do we make all these fucking social groups go. mix and then you play it and it all come together and you're like it's just that that but that's how i learned how to read a room mm -hmm. so now when folk come and see me they're they're more than likely going to stay unless i fucking would, unless I car crash the full thing, right. but they're there for electronic music and 
then it becomes like the art of emotion and like this tune will make them want to punch fuck at the ceiling but this tune will make them want to just stand there and heat, uh, head bop do you know what I mean right. so there's different like I put, I try and like put them in a transit when I'm at festivals as well usually DJs play like the one genre on before me and I like that because I'm just mixing like chopping and right. changing but like at a festival I'll look up and if I've just been slamming it I'll go right I'm going to put them in a trance a bit more melodic and that and then I'll see them all like that like gunning and all like that <laughs> like and you, you see them go in these states and then I love like like in my head I'm like right let's take them out it and then like bang and then they all like Whoa! Again, it's so cool, mate. Have you seen that Lemmy video and he's got my hat? It's like you're in charge, not and he's going. I I fucking love that video. That's what it's like. He's like, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. It's amazing, man. That just reminds me of the actual. I'm going to get it. That's it, mate. That's what it's like. That's what it's like. I fuck class. Fucking. Who's the next question? Scott Scott Barnett wants to know. He says, "I want to hear an honest answer." So right off the bat, he's calling you a liar. He said, um, that, um, "You lied this fault." Scott Barnett says, "Why are you a liar?" No, he says, uh, "I want to hear an honest answer on what it's actually like backstage with all the big DJs. Are they all total mad for it?" So what I think they mean is, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, is everybody expose it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair enough. I think um, backstage is quite a mix, man. Like I'm. Um, like very working class like i've like no been like went to state school everything like was all like, kicked about in a total 90 track so listening to happy hardcore when i was younger drinking mad dog and that do you know what i mean so now going to these events th there is more and more middle class people involved mm -hmm. in music especially raves because it's it's a fucking money maker mm -hmm. and that's what happens it's like fitba mm -hmm. aye, aye. so I've struggled sometimes when, because um, I can never usually level with folk that have spoon fed and like they, they've had everything handed to them, and there's a lot of them backstage. DJs are usually the nicest cunts there, mate. They usually right. go, like, well, I always say to them, say to DJs, like, how can we complain about what we do? Like, we get paid to go fucking play music to folk. Aye. So DJs are usually, ch like, everyone I've met, I don't think there's been MD that I would have said, must be oh, they're bad. a prick. Must be one bastard there, guy. A woman. <laughs> Try to think. The well, maddest cunt I've met is Scream. Scream is mental, fucking aye. mad cunt. Sound, you can tell with how much he loves Scotland, mate. And he, he's sound as fuck. Like, what, he's such a legend, but he loves it, man. He's aye. fucking... He uh, loves it. He's absolutely fucked when I met him. And, uh, like, you've got, like, floor plan and, like, some of the folk that actually invented this electronic music. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And... Sometimes I'm like, fuck, if MD's going to be a prick, they can be a I, prick they all they want, do you know what I mean? Aye, aye. But then there's some folk, you, I, I, do you know what, I'm, tr I, what, I'm trying to think like who I've met that's a dick, but I don't think I've met any that I would say, oh, you're a prick. Because I think most of them are doing what they love for a living, so aye. it's... I'd say, and they maybe wouldn't be. want to be a prick to me because... I don't know. I would. I would say something to them. Aye, if they yes. said something to me, I'd be like, "What are you just, fucking talking like?" If you're not practicants, I bet if like if you were acting like a practicant, then you'd yeah. be like, "They're all fucking." I know that's you're true. You're just going in and you're buzzing in that. And, and I'm just happening. being myself, and and as well, like, I, like I don't mind talking to them, but I don't like I don't want to be best pals. You anymore. don't care like, for it that no, much. Mate, I, I, I want to be. I want to be with my pals and share the memories See, with them. My pals, <laughs> the <on> minute, <laughs> the minute, <laughs> I, the minute, I was the minute. Boom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, no, I've got a story actually. I um, I was taking my wee brother to Creamfields last year, and we'd been camping there for five years. So we went as like slumming it in the shit campsites and that. And then last year we got to go the the backstage way, right? Mm -hmm. And we went outside, and there's a shuttle bus, so they, the artists stay at a Hilton in Manchester Airport, and they get a shuttle bus for there to Creamfield sites, like 20 minutes away. And um, me and Rory were waiting, and uh, the shuttle bus came, and um, this hardstyle DJ came out. I don't, I don't know who it was. I, I would actually say if I knew who it was. He came out with his two pals. I think he was Dutch or something. And he was, uh, we were standing at the shuttle bus, and uh, he was like, I'm not getting in that. I need a V class or a V two or whatever, right? <laughs> right, and and the guy was like, ah, 
that's an E-Class you can get in that because right. it was an actual car there and the shuttle bus the shuttle bus was nicer than the fucking motor as well right yeah, yeah. and uh, he's like ah, no I'm not getting in it it's about comfort oh. I don't want to I don't oh. want to get in that and then I was like ah, I oh. looked at him and I, so I had my snout and I what the fuck are you talking about, mate? I was like, just get in the car. And then, because the, the guy was stressing out, he was like, no, we've not, this is all we've got, this is all we've got. And he's like, I'm not just getting in. Job, I'm not I? getting in that. And I'm like, oh, what mate, a get like a, a fucking grip. What yeah. a fucking boy, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right up Jamie's street, by the way. Confusing me, wasn't that? All about the comfort. I, Jamie's all about the comfort, man, honestly. Uh, so, the next question Aaron Robertson wants to know things you, thing you missed the most from the 10 days. Oh wow! The, the one um, thing I, I miss the the atmosphere, man. Like going the in the like ten day was a thing. Like see, when it was a ten on, it was like a f- occasion, man. And every day social media was buzzing. Every day would be like. I, I work every month and I just hope there's a 10 on at the end of the month so we can go because it gets me through the month and comments like that and putting myself through my, that much shite to then get to the month and it sells out and it's it's just like d- just the feeling that I think I miss the feeling more than anything and, and also um, we're all older now like that was 2017 so what's that five years ago it's like hard to get us all together again and Aye. almost impossible with what I'm doing and because I work every weekend it's hard to get like just that family back together and all getting fucking nutted in somebody's house again do you know what I mean you know what the most gun thing is about things like that right it's like even if you go all the same people you go to the venue you go everything it's like that was a moment in time you can never get that back but that's what makes it so special and honour uh, yeah, like, it would be special if you could just that forever, if right. you could just go out doing that tomorrow you'd be like, it wouldn't mean as much you mm. know what I mean uh, aye so next one Big Willie John wants to <clears> well he doesn't like to know it and he's actually just giving you he's requesting that you sample something in a, in a tune Right. Do, you want, do you want to hear it? Aye. Big Willie John says, Ewan, can you sample that bit at the villain bar from Scooby-Doo 2 where he's in disguise with the afro and singing, thank you for letting me be myself in your next song. Cheers. <laughs> right, what was that? The, 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 villain, so, the villain bar. Villain bar Aye. from Scooby-Doo 2. That afro comes off his head and all that. Where? He knows he's a dog. See, he knows he's a dog. Mate, he was watching it. He was watching it before he came up. Mate. Uh, he knows he's a dog. Then he's afro for us. Uh, so it's Scooby Doo. Aye, so he's in. Aye, so Scooby Doo's in disguise with an afro on, and he's singing, "Thank you for letting me be myself." Oh, <laughs> that sounds like it would good. Would be a week. This guy's afro. Thank you for. There being. you go. You Look, big Willie John a producing feel. I'll put my feature him on it, man. Aye. Thank you for being. Aye. 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 Big Willie John's Big Willie John. He's in it. Actually, Big Willie John wants ten grand. For <laughs> Thank you, Big Willie John. Some boy. Um, aye. Next question. Harvey White wants to know what's the most mental thing you've seen in the crowd while you're playing a set. <clears throat> um, um, I wa- I was playing all night long in sub in sub club and I watched that. <laughs> You're copying each other, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking dashing up and foot long, so I'm playing that shit, man. man. Um, I was in sub club and I watched a bird take her pants off during my set and then fling them at me. Class. That was probably that. That was the other night. So you that, got Tom Jones oh, kind of. I, 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 was, I just I was at what I was like, what she, I was like, what, what's she doing there? Is she gonna push in the flare? And then she just went ah scud right up and I was like, alright. Oh, I've I'm never real. under like I, I get I get why she's done that, right? But I've never understood like the thought process of like Oh, I'm really loving this. I'm gonna I'm fucking, gonna fucking get throw my on. pants at this man. <laughs> I know. Like, he's feel going like, yeah. I know. I know. I felt a bit weird, mate. I didn't know yeah. how to feel. I was like, ah, you just want these back? I, I, I know. I know. What, what, do, what do you do after this? <laughs> no, maybe, maybe me, know what she maybe done. Came with two pairs on. Want to throw? Ah, want to keep going? That's yeah. a prepared lady. And we've got to respect that. Yeah, you need to be. You need Where was this? In Nottingham? Subby. Oh, Subway. Subway. Not in Subway. Subway, aye. I said against hygiene rules. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <don't. laughs> Can't have a name, man. Yeah. Uh, but, aye, so we've got so, uh, Nathan McGrory. I feel like we've answered this. I'm going to ask, ask it anyway, just because. It's Can a, sum it up? Aye, so what, aye, that's a nice piece of summary. What got you into Techno House and what made him want to start doing his own music? So, just outside even you loving it, what made you go, I want to do mine? Fucking um, shit. I think, like, I was more into like 
the origins of house music and how um like folk and the eighties, the late eighties and like nineties, how are they making tunes that still sound amazing fucking 30, 40 years later? Mm-hmm. So that interested me more than now and then I think like I struggled with I struggle with modern music because I don't like tech house and I I never label what I play because I play like trans acid hip hop fucking everything so I never usually like label genres and I'm I'm no like mad for anything apart from I'd say I'm a house head more than anything but yeah. the origins was like that's what really interested me and like when I started producing modern day dance music is because we have so much at our um, like fingertips to use now to make it sound clean and crystal clear, it, I think it lo- lost a bit of soul. Like back then, they were using fucking free things that had just been invented, and it sounded so raw as if a human was actually doing it. Whereas right. now, it's like a robot's just made a tune, and it's so clean and soulless. So, for me to get into music, I was like, how. Ah, I can just go down the same route that everybody's went, go to a fucking music school, learn the same shit, sound the same way as everybody, or I can just YouTube, get obsessed with it and, and try and I wanted to sound like the old school, but with the new school like production, what we've oh. learned. So although we've came leaps and bounds in production, how did how do I get that soul into the tracks? And that's kinda what I've crisscrossed together and that's what that was my motivation to start making music because was more or less getting fed up with the shit I was hearing like nowadays I feel Aye. there's a lot of shit music out like mm-hmm. dance music that I I'm like, ah, fuck it this could be a bit better or how do we change this and like even tell me something good if you look at it know what it's done I tell you who made me look at it like this I met Harry for Harry and Dom mm-hmm. and Sub Club and Harry come over to me and he was the first person ever that's ever talked to me about tell me something good artistically like the actual music like what I've done with that tune and he was like like how did how did you realise to speed that vocal up that fast because it's an old function and it's like tell me something good and it's so slow so I sped it right up and then like the progression of the tune how there's no there's no hats or percussion in that tune until the big build up and it comes in and that was all planned and it even if you listen to it, it does sound like it's older produced. Like it, I've I've done that on purpose. So Aye. that was that was like my motivation for get like starting to write tunes, mate, for sure. And and getting out getting into the genres and that was like my mate Aaron uh, taking me to Tamasumo at Berkeley Suite and the boy Roos again. Um, we used to DJ together and then after see if we couldn't sleep or that. And like, oh, I don't want to go to sleep. I'm fucking wired. Mm. We would sit in the motor for till it's seven in the morning and one night I, I remember saying to Russ I was like I, like I don't even like techno mate it's so boring like wh- how'd you get into it and then he, he was like ah, right listen to this tune listen what's about to happen so we'd sit and it would just be like a bass and a kick and then he'd be like right listen when the hat comes in listen what he's doing with that hat and then he just he, he educated me on how to listen to it okay. aye. 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 and that really changed my mind again because then now, like, if I hear fucking... Because I'm, like, a producer now, any wee instrument that comes in, I'm like, oh, that's fucking minted, do you know what I mean? And, mm. uh, yeah, and that's how that's how I got into, uh, like, techno and that. Right. That's class, mate. Fantastic, mate. Well, that's us, man. That it's been a beautiful... Yeah, was so good, man. A beautiful conversation, man. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Genuinely. Uh, honestly. Amazing, mate. Me, lads. Cheers. That Cheers, was bro. <laughs> where, you, where are you, where you, pl- where are you playing next? This will, go out, this will go out Sunday. Friday, I'm in. Friday, I'm in London. Saturday, fly open air. Got my first boiler room, which I'm fucking buzzing oh, about. Yeah, that'll be class. Big one, man. Is that getting filmed in that? Is yeah, that... mate. Oh, proper. Yes. So do you know that Follimore? Remember aye, we aye, played the aye, Abba tune, aye, and it went, it went viral. Aye. Him playing the Abba tune. That was that's the one I'm playing. Where's at. he from? France. I, ah, I thought that. Yeah. I thought that. So he he done that. So I'm excited to do that. But I'm playing. <laughs> Fucking! I tried to get it changed, but I'm playing in London 3 a.m. till 5 a.m. and then my boiler room set is at 5 p.m. So I've got 12 hours to sleep and get from fucking London to Edinburgh. Them's but, the breaks, but, but, mate, but like, it's the most important set for me. That that was like one of the biggest goals is to play a boiler room, Aye. and I'm like, I can't believe this is. I'm playing at 5 a.m. the night before, Aye. but I, ugh, mate, I'm sure it'll be fine. But then I'm going straight for there to the main stage at 8pm on fly as well so I'm like second last on before over mono and then the weekend after that is Dublin uh, and 
Ibiza for the very first time. Never oh, been, wow. I've never been to Ibiza. Big couple of weeks coming up. Big weeks. But I thank you for coming on. Cheers, it's amazing. Well, Cheers, that. Troops. Look, Troops, like the video, yeah? Rate us five stars on Spotify. Send Jamie money through PayPal. Please. Make sure it's friends and family mm. and not gifted. They'll take a percentage Market, off it. Yeah. Send him all your money. He's earned it. Every bit, yeah. Every single bit of it, Troops. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers. Cheers, Troops. Cheers.